let's start with our new case study this is the select query select e dot first name e dot last name e dot hire date from employees and comma departments d1 so this is a join operation between employees and a departments table where e dot employee id in where there is a sub query uh, select manager from departments d2 where department id is equal to 10 and then there is a join operation e dot department id is equal to d1 dot department id and d dot location id is equal to 1700 and e dot hire date is greater than 30th jan 2000 so the output of this query is a single row so let's analyze what the fundamental approach for sql uh, tuning is so the fundamental approach for sql tuning states that we start with such a column in the where part of the clause which has got too many distinct values okay let's see how we want this query to be executed and how oracle has actually executed this query is one and the same or not okay so in this case if we go with the fundamental approach there are only three columns which with we can start with so the first column first where clause uh, part is e dot employee id in okay and d dot location id is equal to 1700 and then e dot hire date is greater than 38 gen we can't start with this join operation first instead of that we have to start with either of these three where clause predicates so let's see if we start with e dot higher date is greater than 30th jan so e dot higher date greater than 30th jan 2000 is going to qualify for too many rows right so this is not a very good column to start with next column is d dot location id is equal to 1700 so in departments table location id is again not a good column so d dot location id is going to again qualify for more number of rows so the only column left is e dot employee id right so in order to access the values of e dot employee id so now employee id in an employees table is a primary key so any output which comes to this in part of the clause uh, will always be unique and is going to always expect one row for whichever value that is passed inside this subquery so in order to uh, get the value of e dot employee id we need to execute this subquery first right so this subquery if we try to analyze so it is doing a select manager id from departments d2 okay so it is accessing departments table where department id is equal to 10 now in departments table department id is a unique key so the output of this query again will always be a single row so that means one row will be executed from the subquery and then the value will be given to the e dot employee id so so as per our analysis we have to make sure that oracle will first execute this subquery then it does uh, fill, uh, then it tries to do employee id in this part of the where clause and then it should go for a join operation okay so this is the way uh, the oracle should execute this query so now let's see whether oracle has actually taken this execution plan so looking at the execution plan what oracle has taken so this is the execution plan and if you create a parent child relationship uh, in this execution plan so fourth operator will execute first okay so let's see what fourth operator is so fourth operator if you look at the predicate information for the fourth operator it says access d1 dot location id is equal to 1700 right so before that if you see the row column right so row column is expecting each operation is expecting some uh, rows which are more than one right if this the output of this query is only a single row so in order to execute this single row what i see is that there are so many rows which the each and every operation is expecting so this is again definitely not a good thing because the output is one row but each operation is expecting more number of rows so this is possible only if you don't have a good clause in the where part but we already have an employee id which always expects one row so why is oracle expecting so many rows out of each operation okay there is something definitely wrong going on here so let's look at the predicate information so as like i said earlier looking at this parent child relationship fourth operation will execute first so fourth operation is nothing but you're accessing the departments d1 based on location id is equal to 1700 right so this clearly says that instead of accessing e dot employee id it is first accessing d dot location id is equal to 17 so in again like i said earlier in the departments table location id is not at all a good column okay so because it is expecting more number of rows out of this join operation if this had been a unique column what i meant to say is that if location id would have been a primary key or a 
unique key or such a column which would have given less rows for 1700 then it would have been good but in this case d dot location id is equal to 17 is expecting 21 rows out of this operation right so yeah so fourth operation is your d dot location id is equal to 1700 then after 4, 3 will execute. So 3 is nothing but table access by index row ID on departments table. So that will try to access department ID of D1. So this department ID it will try to access. Because when it scans the fourth operation that is table X, uh, index range scan on um, location ID is equal to 1700. It has only scanned location ID. But for departments D1, I also need to scan department ID as well for further operations. So that's why there is a table access by index row ID, which is the third operation. So now it has scanned D1 dot department ID as well. So again, when you create a parent child relationship, so next operation after this will be the fifth operation. So now fifth operation is nothing but table access full on your employees table. So if you see the fifth operation, it is doing a table access full on the employees table and then it is filtering out higher date greater than 30, 30th Jan 2000. So this means that after filtering out d1 dot location is equal to 1700 and then going with a join operation over here it is further accessing the employees table and then try to filter out the higher date which is greater than 20,000. So after this it does a hash join which is the second operation okay and if you see the second operation it is doing the join part so that means this part of the clause right. So how the oracle has executed this step so it has first access the d dot location id is equal to 1700 then it has access the e dot higher date greater than 30th gen and then it did a join operation between these two and later seventh operation will execute then sixth operation so seventh operation is nothing but executing this subquery and then accessing the e dot employee id after all the join operation and all the filtering is done okay so this is definitely a very lengthy operation which oracle has taken so in order to make this query better, so before moving that, let's see the statistics, right? So we were saying that if you see the employee ID column here, so employee ID column is having 107 distinct values, right? And is having 107 rows it's as well. So starting with the employee ID will always be the best way to start with, right? And if you see the location ID of the departments table it is having seven distinct values and that total number of rows is 27 right so that is why the location id is may or may not be a good column to start with so that is the reason why we should start with e dot employee id right and then we'll go for a join operation with the department table and then this rest two will go out as part of your filter operation okay so in order to make this work we have to introduce some hints so now let's see how we should execute this query or what is the solution for this query. So whenever you see such a query which has got a uh, subquery, we should execute such a subquery first provided that the outer column for this subquery is having more number of distinct values. For example, in this case, a dot employee ID is having too many distinct values. So that's why this subquery we should always execute first. Then a dot employee should be accessed. After that, the result should go with the join operation and then we'll filter out from the join operation whatever rows we have got back from these two output so we will filter out d dot location id is equal to 1700 and then we'll filter out e dot higher date greater than 30th jan 2000 okay so how we can achieve this so in order to achieve this we will pass just a small hint that is called as leading d2 okay so d2 is nothing but the table alias name so this is the department's table and for that we have a d2 as the alias so this alias will be passed as a leading hint that so that's why this subquery will execute first and then e dot employee id should be accessed so let's see whether the oracle has actually executed the uh, expected plan so looking at this is the execution plan after passing the leading hint of d2 so if you again create a parent child relationship for this operations and or the execution plan fourth operation will execute first and then third operation will execute so let's see what is the fourth operation. So fourth operation is nothing but accessing the department ID is equal to 10, right? So what does this mean? So it is accessing department ID is equal to 10. That means it is executing the subquery first, which we wanted. So after this subquery is executed, we have to make sure that e.employee is accessed next. So once fourth operation is done, 
third operation will execute because three is the uh, parent of four so what is the third operation so third operation is nothing but filter of manager id is not null so why there is a table access by index row id for the third operation is because it has access the department id is equal to 10 but for that department id is equal to 10 it has not accessed the manager id right so that is the reason why you see a third operation table access by index row id so that it can fetch the manager id information so after that sixth operation will execute and then fifth will execute so what is the sixth operation sixth operation is nothing but accessing the employee id is equal to manager id so that means so this part of the clause e dot employee id in so this is getting executed right so this is what we wanted so fifth sixth operation is nothing but accessing your employee id for that respective manager id so this part of the clause is executed here now at again fifth if you see after sixth fifth operation will execute so what is the fifth operation it is filtering a dot hide greater than 38000 so after it, this query is executed this part of the clause is executed it will try from this employees it will try to filter out a dot higher date greater than 38 and 2000 so if the, from this row if that if the employee higher date is greater than 38 june 38 jan 2000 that row will be retained if not that row will be discarded all right so after that eighth operation will execute and then the seventh operation will execute so what is the eighth operation so eighth operation is nothing but e dot department id is equal to d1 dot department id so this is your join operation so this is exactly what we wanted so looking at this execution plan this is the best execution plan which it is supposed to be running and this is what we wanted oracle to execute right so to summarize this execution has plan has first ran this subquery then it has ran the e dot employee id because this is the primary key after that from this row whatever the output of this uh, part of the clause was from that row e dot hide it was filtered out and then it was given for the join operation and later d1 dot location id is equal to 1700 was filtered out as part of the seventh operation so do you see a filter predicate here location id is equal to 1700 right so this is how you should execute uh, look or tune a query which has got a subquery you start with the subquery first which has got an outer column with too many distinct values rather than going with such a column that is d dot location is equal to 1700 which has got very less number of distinct values right so if you want to further uh, confirm that the investigation is correct or not so you just run this in a subquery select manager id from department id to where department id is equal to 10 so the output is only one row with manager id is equal to 200 right then you can fire this query select count of star from employees where employee id in 200 so this is going to give you one row okay so the we are running these two queries to validate that the output of this query is a single row and the output of this clause e dot employee id in is also a single row so those two things we have validated so that's why we have a one row here so if you want to further analyze if you accessed e dot location is equal to 1700 first how many rows it is going to give you back it is going to give you 21 rows right so overall department is having 27 rows so out of 27 it is you are accessing 21 rows so definitely this is not a good column to start with so the ideal way is to start with the subquery and then to start with the e dot employee id and then go for the join operation okay so this is how you can tune a query which has got a subquery within it so with that said we'll conclude the case study for today and uh, i wish you a very wonderful tuning experience